Um, if I was too enthusiastic there, Peter, continue. It's a pleasure to see you in your place, Mr Mundell, and I'm grateful to the Backbench Business Committee for granting this debate. It is extremely apt that this debate is taking place on the same day that the levelling up and regeneration bill returns to the Commons. If we can successfully reform business rates so that they are fair to businesses right across the country, then that really will help deliver meaningful levelling up. At the present time, with businesses having to contend with a le level of inflation not seen for a generation, soaring utility bills and stubbornly high rents, business rates are a fixed cost which, from which occupiers cannot escape. They are an impediment to regional growth and their impact needs to be significantly reduced with the system being put on a long-term, easily understood footing. That way, businesses will know where they stand and can then make long-term investment decisions. To be fair to all political parties, they have recognised the unfair and unjust nature of the current system, and commitments have been made to both replacement and reform. From my perspective, I sense that the former, that is replacement, is a holy grail which in the real world is not achievable. To address the immediate threat that business rates pose to many businesses in different sectors in different parts of the country, a wide variety of reliefs and exemptions have been introduced. Whilst these are very welcome, they have made the system more complicated and difficult to comprehend. Currently, we have a situation where the Labour Party is committed to abolishing business rates and replacing them with a system fit for the 21st century, a promise, as I've said, that I sense it will be impossible for them to keep. This is because the drawbacks of, despite the drawbacks of business, that business rates do possess, they have inherent advantages, and these are that the treasury, to the, to the treasury, they yield approximately £25 billion per annum, they are relatively easy to collect, and they are difficult to avoid. It is, Mr Mundell, impossible to find an alternative system of taxation that has these advantages, and I believe that it's important to get on with reforming the current system. Turning to the government's record, the Chancellor did make significant and largely welcome announcements in his autumn statement, which I shall detail later. However, I am mindful that we did in, make commitments in the 2019 Conservative Manifesto, which we, are yet, we have yet to properly and fully implement. These include carrying out a fundamental review of the system and reducing business rates in the long term for retail businesses, as well as extending the discounts to grassroots music venues, small cinemas and pubs. Yes, we have provided a wide variety of short-term reliefs, but we have not yet provided the permanent fix which is so urgently needed. Mr Mundell, it's appropriate to briefly describe business rates. They are tax charged to most non-domestic properties, with some exceptions, such as small businesses with a rateable value of less than £12,000. They are calculated by multiplying the rateable value of the property by the uniform business rate, that's UBR multiplier. The rateable value itself is an assessment of the annual rent that the property would achieve if it was available to let on the open market at a specific fixed valuation date. The UBR multiplier for 2022-2023 is 51.2 pence in the pound, or 49.9p for small businesses. Before I came to this place, I was a chartered surveyor. And whilst I did not specialise in business rates, I did from time to time carry out business rates appeals. This was invariably in situations where there was a lack of rental evidence on which to base an assessment of a property's rateable value. As a result, it was very difficult to agree a value and there was a risk of a rateable value being imposed, which was abstract from reality and took no account of the ability of the business to pay 
and thus to continue to exist and to operate profitably. There is a need for the Valuation Office Agency, the VOA, to be more transparent, open and collegiate in their dealings with businesses, and I shall touch upon this later. Mr Mundell, as I've mentioned, the Chancellor in his autumn statement made some significant announcements, which include confirmation of a revaluation, which will come into effect from this April, the freezing of the uniform business rate multiplier, the reform of the transitional relief scheme, a supporting small business scheme, and a 75% retail, hospitality and leisure relief worth up to £110,000 per business. The revaluation is generally to be welcomed, and, as, and though there are some notable exceptions, as, as it will, on the whole, bring down rates in economically depressed areas whilst raising rates in areas where rental values have risen. The announcement that the downward phasing of the transitional relief scheme for England is to be abolished is good news, with upwards, fun, uh, with upwards phasing being funded by the Treasury. The problem with transitional relief was that meaningful and full reductions in business rates that businesses, particularly in the retail sector, desperately needed, took far too long to filter through to them. These measures will provide much-needed support to help businesses get through the next few months, and they provide the foundation stone on which to now carry out the fundamental review that was promised. Despite these measures, which in many respects can be likened to the application of yet more sticking plasters and indeed bandages, fundamental flaws remain to be addressed. Although the government has frozen the UBR at 51p in the last two budget, it does remain unsustainably high. In no other country in Europe do businesses pay half the rental value of premises in property taxes. Set at such a high level, business rates deter investment in retail, leisure and hospitality. It should be noted that the UBR was just 34p in the pound when it was first introduced in 1990. The extension of business rates relief for retail premises from 50% to 75% in 2023-2024 is welcome, even though it only helps smaller retailers because it applies to the first £110,000 of business rates paid. The Office of Budget Responsibility envisages that this relief will be removed from the 1st of April 2024, which would leave retailers with a massive tax hike at that point. In effect, Mr Mundell, a cliff edge. Therefore, a tapering scheme will need to be applied to overcome this particular problem. In the recently published valuation list, which comes into effect next April, the valuation of retail premises only fell by 10% across the country in the six years from the last valuation date of April 2015 to 2021, Without the Chancellor's measures on downwards phasing to freeze the UBR, business rates would have had a massive levelling down impact on all retail and on depressed regions in particular. I think this underlines the need for fundamental reform. I shall move on to briefly highlight some of the inequities of the current system that need to be addressed. Business rates are a tax paid by paid by businesses before a sale or a transaction has even been made. It, 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 it is, in effect, a tax on existence rather than a tax based on success or failure. It therefore follows that it needs to be kept low so that it can be paid by all businesses. A high uniform business rate not only discourages occupation, but also investment in new accommodation and the physical expansion of existing premises. Ratepayers who have invested in improving their premises are penalised as they then face higher business rates bills. The system adversely affects physical retailers whose properties on high streets have significantly high rateable values than the warehouses that serve online retailers. There are similar challenges faced by the hospitality sector. 
Whilst business rates should, in theory, with the current UBR, represent 51% of the rental value of a property, and hence one third of the cost of occupancy, retail has been struggling, and some landlords have agreed much lower rents to enable their tenants to stay in businesses. Rents are increasingly being linked to turnover, and are thus disconnected from the rental values that, they are, that are used by the VOA to determine business rates bills. Therefore, many retail outlets will be paying business rate bills in excess of the, their actual rent, even after the revaluation takes effect. In the new list, rateable values for retail have gone down by 10% on average. This, Mr Mundell, is surprisingly little given that many shops were closed and paying no rent at all at the valuation date of 1st of April 2021, when we were in the midst of a COVID lockdown. The valuation process that allocates properties their rateable value is not transparent, with the VOA not sharing the evidence that it uses to substantiate the basis of valuations. The only way that occupiers can assess this evidence is by challenging the valuation through the check challenge appeal process, which is lengthy and costly. There is therefore much concern that many challenges to the valuation process will be submitted over the coming months. There is a worry that the VOA uses flimsy evidence when conducting property valuations. Those businesses that engage with the VOA through the appeals process or by providing evidence leading up to the valuation, have more accurate valuations, whilst those who haven't seen any reductions have not engaged with the VOA. Mr Mundell, the VOA has outlawed 400,000 applications made by businesses in mitigation of rates bills on the basis of COVID-19. Their view is that COVID did not constitute what is known as a material change in circumstances, which, does, which can lead to a reassessment of a, of, of, of a, of a, of a um, rateable value. This decision has been justified by, the, by themselves by the allocation of 1.5 of the £1.5 billion COVID relief fund, the distribution of which was devolved to local government. Now, while some local authorities have been quick to distribute this relief, others have been slow. The lack of a uniform distribution mechanism has meant that receiving the relief payments is dependent on where the occupier is ba occupant is based and a postcode lottery has in effect been created. In the autumn statement, the Chancellor froze the UBR at 51p for one year only, that is for 2023-2024. As mentioned previously, the OBR figures indicate that the UBR will be index linked thereafter. This means that as matters stand at present, business rates for retail premises will rise from April 2024. The government has extended its 75% rate discount for shops, paying up to £110,000 in rates until 2024. Likewise, unless the government extends the relief, occupiers will again face a cliff edge when the scheme expires. The government will soon be bringing forward a non-domestic rating bill. It is important that the contents of the bill are fully debated and that the opportunity is taken to ensure that the bill is the vehicle for delivering the fundamental reform of business rates that was promised in 2019. The bill will include provisions such as the duty to notify of any change to a property, the frequency of revaluation, and the removal of the need for transitional relief to be fiscally neutral. Along, alongside the duty to notify, there should also come a corresponding duty on the part of the VOA to share with occupiers the evidence that it is using to assess rateable values. Due to the complexity of the business rate system and the burden on ratepayers, occupiers, quite understandably, often seek advice from rating experts on how to best approach the whole process. Unlike in other professions, rating advisors do not need licenses to practice. This has resulted in a number of operators who give bad advice and cheat operators out of their money. A way needs to be found as to how to 
outlaw such conduct. Currently, property owners do not have to pay business rates on empty buildings for three months. After this period ex expires, most businesses have to pay business rates in full, though there are some exceptions. In the outcome of the 20, 2021 review, the government committed to an empty property relief consultation in 2022, but this is yet to take place. It is important that the empty property relief is extended, probably to 12 months, as this way rates will be exclusively paid by revenue-generating businesses. Mr Mundell, it is also it is appropriate to highlight the particular challenges faced by the hospitality sector that is a vitally important component part of, lo of many local economies all around the UK, including in the Waveney constituency that I represent. With a fair business rate system, the sector can play a key role in levelling up. Looking at the revaluation list in the Waveney area, the issue that concerns me is that those businesses who have invested in their businesses and who are vital engines of local economic growth are being heavily penalised for their ambition and success. By way of example, the rateable value for the Kessingland Beach Holiday Park is due to rise from £291,450 to £388,500. That for the Harbour Inn in Lowestoft from £23,500 to £45,000. And for the Commodore in Alton Broad from £67,500 to £79,000. The current system sees the hospitality sector overpay nationally by £2.4 billion per year relative to its turnover, or in other words, a 300% overpayment. In the short term, the differential rates between large and small businesses should be removed, and the eligibility rules for reliefs based on rateable value should be abolished. In the longer term, a significantly reduced UBR multiplier should be introduced. Mr Mundell, to, ad to address the, the variety of problems that I've outlined, root and branch reform is urgently required. Business rates would be fairer and better if the system was simplified, the tax base was broadened by removing the myriad of complicated reliefs, annual valuations were introduced, a one-year antecedent valuation date was set, there were faster appeals, and there was greater evidence sharing between occupiers and the VOA. Such reform could be achieved by making the following changes. Firstly, by reducing the UBR to the order of 30%. By way of example, that by reducing the UBR from 51p to 34p, which was the rate in 1990, this would reduce unsustainably high levels of business rates on retail and hospitality premises and would level the playing field for so many businesses. A lower UBR would reduce the barriers to entry, expansion and innovation, thereby encouraging growth and broadening the tax base. This would, in effect, plug the gaps in revenue that the Treasury might fear would result from a lower UBR. The, value, the government, secondly, the government has correctly moved from five-yearly to three-yearly valuations. This represents a step in the right direction, but it would be far more equitable if there were yearly valuations. By implementing yearly valuations, business rates would accurately reflect the dynamic movements of the market and would allow occupiers to benefit immediately from changes to rateable values. The increased occurrence of events such as the COVID pandemic and the war in Ukraine further emphasise the need for a system that is able to quickly react to rapidly changing economic conditions. Thirdly, Mr Mundell, we need to look at the abolition of the system of complicated reliefs. Instead of the fundamental review that was promised, the government has continued to apply sticking plasters to a system 
that, assures it can, that ensures its continued functioning. This has culminated in a system of complicated reliefs that can be difficult to navigate. The business rate system comprises 12 reliefs. These would be rendered unnecessary with the lowering of the UBR, meaning a business would benefit from paying lower rates immediately instead of, navigate, instead of negotiating and navigating the VOA system of reliefs. Fourthly, many of the problems that I've detailed could be fixed by making the VOA more efficient. By being predominantly paper-based, their systems are not fit for the 21st century. By digitizing, they could make their collection systems more efficient and could take a big step towards systems efficiencies like annual valuations. The government recently published a consultation to this effect called the Digitalised Business Consultation. However, unfortunately, it largely missed a point. Instead of consulting on the measures that would reduce the administrative burdens on businesses and ratepayers, they are trying to increase it by requiring more information so as to, effectively, so as to more effectively target the lease. Mr Mandel, I sense that I have spoken for far too long and you will be pleased to hear I am not nearing my conclusion. High business rates hold back economic growth, are a barrier to levelling up, and an added burden that many businesses simply cannot afford at the present time. To be fair, government has listened and is aware of the problem. The response has been the introduction of short-term reliefs, which are welcome, but which in the longer term complicate the system still further. We need to stop searching for that elusive holy grail and keep and keeping, keep kicking the can down the road and instead introduce measures that are pragmatic, that can be delivered quickly and honour that commitment to a fundamental review. I therefore urge the Treasury to bring forward these initiatives, I would suggest in the spring budget, and in the first instance, I look forward to my honourable friend, the Minister's response. Thank you. Thank you. The question is that this House has considered business rates